Hey guys, Kayak Fishing Carl here again. Today I want to talk a bit about some DIY chatter baits that I've been making, and anybody could be making these. They are really simple. As long as you can uh, make or buy the jig heads, the right jig heads, you, the hardest thing about these guys is feeding a split ring through the hook of the eye and through the flat jig blade, the chatter bait blade. So that being said, uh, I really need to confess that I've gone completely overboard building chatterbaits for next season, but I'm convinced enough of their effectiveness that I'm going to try and catch every species I can on a chatterbait this season. So that's right, a chatterbait will be my lure of choice for everything I fish for this year. Pike, walleye, perch, trout, and maybe even some bass, depending if I do any traveling this year. So I saw some chatterbaits online and thought they were a bit too expensive, as any good DIYer would, and instead spent way more money on bits and bobs so I could make my own. So here's where the story gets interesting and a bit out of control. I found some blades online at some different tackle suppliers, but only one or two sizes and a couple of colors. But I saw manufacturers with smaller versions, so I knew there had to be different size blades out there. So after a quick search, I discovered the wonders of online shopping from China. And being in Canada, the shipping is much cheaper and only a slightly slower than anything from the US. So since I'll be fishing for many species, I want to have different sizes of chatterbaits, and I managed to find about six different sizes of chatterbait blades, which you guys can see the different sizes right there. Uh, from extra small to extra large. Uh, I've also four different types of jigs for my chatterbaits with different sizes as well. So all in all, I have a very wide selection of blade sizes and jig weights and different profiles that I can also apply to different colors and plastic trailers to. So here are all the different blades that I'm using. As you can see, there's all my different blades. Uh, as you can see, I have the Magnum Jig Dancer blades all the way down to these micro-sized ones, which I'm using on uh, quarter, eighth, and sixteenth ounce jig heads. So different molds for the different jigs that I use. Uh, that's an important part about choosing the jigs for the chatterbait, that the hook eye is 90 degrees to the jig head. So as a split ring will be used, you guys can see that. There's my jig head and a split ring. So split ring through the eye of the jig, of the hook itself, and through the uh, chatterbait blade. So it's super important that we get, you find a mold that lets you use a hook eye that's 90 degrees or opposed to this, the uh, length of the, of the jig, or it's opposed to the profile. So if it was in the other direction, our blade would be going this way through the water, so it wouldn't work that well. It, would, uh, it would, uh, wouldn't have a very good swimming motion. So you guys can see there's, and all, all the stuff I'm building, that's, that's the key to this, is having that 90 degree hook eye, or being able to open that hook eye up and slip the blade directly onto, which I am doing with one of these molds, so I'll show you guys that when it comes time. So the molds and jigs I'm using or a football, a football jig. You guys can see the profile of the football there. I'm using a Trocar Pro Slim Jig. Likewise, you can see the 90 degree hook eye right there. I'm using the Poison Swingtail Jig. This is what I'm talking about where I can open this eye up to put the blade through that loop to uh, attach it to the jig directly. And Lastly, for the small stuff, I'm using a live bait jig. So you guys can see, I've actually gone and put the loops in here. So I may use a small, put something else on there, maybe a little, um, a little willow leaf blade or something. But I've had to kind of do a little bit of work to get this hook eye to 90 degrees. So there's the there's the four types of hooks that I'm using, and you guys can see, there's four different style of the chatter baits that I've made with those guys. I just put white so that will be the same so I could kind of show you guys. So I'll start by talking about the poison swingtail jig. I like this jig because I can make a minor modification to the inserts that lets me slip the blade onto the wire before I bake the powder coating. Oops, wrong end. There you go. You guys can see all I did was snip the one side a little bit shorter. So The end of the wire is still in the lead, but it's strong enough that I can I can twist that wire out to slip the blade on, then push the wire back into the hole in the lead, and then bake the powder coating. That locks it in there, uh, makes it a lot stronger, 
Uh, and that's the reason why I kind of went with, one of the reasons why I kind of went with doing these poison swingtail jigs. So six sizes options from one ounce down to one eighth of an ounce. I can customize the hooks and the skirts for any color trailer I like. I can use any different, uh, any different size of chatterbait blade that I like. Uh, I can use it with a skirt or without. I can use any kind of hook. Um, I'm not sure you guys can see that. I can use any kind of hook that I want. This guy's getting all twisted up there. I can use any kind of hook that I want, uh, and that lets me use any kind of size blade that I want. So, for example, this one, I've got a really big, I've got the magnum size blade. Uh, uh, blade. I've got the uh, three-quarter ounce jig head. I've got a nice shiny skirt. I've got a wide gap trocar hook on there. And then I've got a super size uh, plastic trailer with tons of motion. You guys can see, I mean, all kinds of motion. I'm kind of at a bad angle to show you guys that, but all kinds of motion with that, that setup. There's a similar one with a smaller, a smaller blade, about the same size jig head, uh, different color skirt, just a little bit different hook and a different trailer, and I'm showing you guys all the white ones today just because I got a lot of stuff in white that I haven't uh, haven't quite had a chance to fish yet. You guys can see I used different color eyes on that one as well. So, yeah, that one with this jig, with this uh, swim poison swing tail jig, I got lots of options uh, for sizes and different uh, size lures, and because, like I said earlier, I want to try and fish for lots of different species with this. I've got lots of options from one ounce uh, down to an eighth of an ounce. Next up is the Trocar Pro Swim Jig. This is a narrow swim jig that uses Trocar hooks in three sizes, half, three, uh, three eighths, and quarter ounce. Uh, they can also be made weedless using a weed uh, fiber weed guard. The hook sizes for this one are three aught, four aught, and five aught. Uh, behind the head of this jig, you guys can see right there, the is a double holder for adding a skirt and a trailer. So the Pro Swim Jig makes a great medium size, medium to large size chatterbait with a skirt and a three inch or four inch trailer. So there's there's one with a, a three inch white zoom uh, uh, grub, and there's a little bit smaller jig with a four inch Zacco. I'm also using a modified football jig mold. I modified this mold to use 90 degree eye trocar hooks. So this one does three quarter, one and one and a half ounce football jigs. So I can get these jigs down pretty deep. It also gives the jig the mass to really push the thump of uh, a extra large size jig blade. Uh, plus getting down nice and deep is usually, seems to be that's where the fish are where I fish. So. Uh, this mold uses 4-aught, 5-aught, and 6-aught size hooks. Uh, it can also be made weedless using a fiber weed guard, just like the, the swim jig. So this football head makes a ton of noise in the water with the standard size jig blade as the blade hits the sides of the football um, while it's moving through the water. So pike will crush this, guy, this one, you guys. So you guys can see when this guy's moving through the water, these blades will actually impact the side of the football and make just a ton of noise. So I've used them with the magnum size blade on these jigs as well, which makes for a slower cadence and much stronger thump through the water. So these ones, uh, this one being a little bit custom, tro uh, do it does make uh, this mold for the 90 degree jig eyes. Uh, they don't go up to one and a half though. Their mold is uh, I believe one, three quarter and maybe a half ounce. So if you wanna go with a little bit shower, uh, or you uh, a little bit smaller jig head, that's a possibility too. You can buy it straight from the catalog without having to modify anything like I've done. I just modified this one because it was what I already had. So lastly, something I'm doing is a bit of an oddball project that requires all kinds of customization. I'm using the three smallest jig sizes in a live bait jig mold with number uh, one and one aught size hooks. So because I need the offset, high, the offset eye in the, these jig hooks for this, uh, I had to modify the opening in the jig there where the the eye of the hook goes so just had to open that up a little tiny bit um, and i also have to modify each and every hook so because i can't just buy offset eye jig hooks to fit this mold i modify the hooks by heating them up with a torch 
and giving the hook eye a twist to make it 90 degrees from the, uh, from the shank of the hook. So I have to be careful not to overheat the metal in the hook and I also have to be careful that they don't break after they cool down. So usually it uh, takes a bit of work to make those, to make the hooks for this one. So uh, I plan to use these smaller, these smaller size uh, chatter baits for uh, perch um, and uh, trout in a few lakes. So um, you guys can see, here's the, the 1 16th ounce. I may do something with that little eyelet, so I left them on there. You guys can see I got different size eyes, and I've got a, uh, like a little swim jig body on there as well. So should have lots of movement through the water. Here's another one I used with the, uh, the quarter ounce jig head and a little bit bigger um, blade. And you guys can see I even made a little shorter skirt for this guy and put a, uh, like a power bait, like a minnow uh, on there. So gonna give those a try for some smaller, smaller species. So uh, as, far, as far as color patterns go, I like some oddball color schemes, but I've basically been looking through my bins of soft lures and building the rest of the lure to match. So for example, uh, this guy right here, I really like the little sick fish style paddle tail. So I chose a skirt that matched it. Went with a kind of yellowy green jig head and a chrome or stainless, I should say, jig blade. So a little bit of orange in the in the skirt. Likewise with uh, this big guy right here. Uh, this is a Nugent Lures uh, Super Grub, I believe the body is called. Um, a nice big hook, um, yellow with a touch of red for the uh, the jig head, and I custom painted myself uh, the front of the uh, jig blade to go with that classic five of diamonds color scheme. So I'm hoping this guy will uh, get lots of love from the pike this summer. So that's it for this one, guys. I know it was a long one. Thanks for checking out my video. This is Kayak Fishing Carl saying, hope to see you out on the water. Take care, guys.